Hey, sports fans, it's world champion Andy Gepper, Mike North. Punch this number in your phone right now. If you're driving, pull over. 1-800-808-3419. 1-800-808-3419 for a free pick and info for the premier handicapping site in the country, VegasScoresAndOdds.com. It's the only site you'll ever need with expert handicappers like John Anthony, Denny Macklin, Tony Sacco, Ray Monahan, yours truly, and many more. Check out the homepage of VegasScoresAndOdds.com for a tote board with your buddy. Follow Vegas Scores and Odds on Twitter and dial up 1-800-808-3419. It's 1-800-808-3419. 1-800-808-3419. Or go to VegasScoresandOdds.com. What follows is for news and entertainment purposes only. Any use of the forthcoming information in violation of any federal, state, or local law is prohibited. Mike North, you are on fire. Do you know anybody else that good? No. no. They'll tell you they are. They may think they are. But we're documented every single week. The eye is on us. Right. And I ain't talking about the eye of CBS. The public eye. The first feeling I got when I won a bet was elation. The worst feeling was when I lost a bet and I wanted to jump off a balcony. <laughs> Give me a quick betting tip. Yeah, do win and don't lose, but usually it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> How many times you heard this? I'm going to Vegas. I go, how'd you do? Well, if I lost four grand, but you know, you go there to have fun. No, you go there to win. And that's what's wrong with people. They have the negative mentality in anything they do, including sports, before you even laid the bet down. So you got to be positive. Vegas Scores and Odds is the landing place that gave me an opportunity to handicap. They let me show what I could do. And there's packages, there's free picks. What does Vegas Scores and Odds do when you perform? They reward you and they take care of you. And that's why we're ready to do this show. The Vegas Scores and Odds Advantage with Mike North starts right now. That's right, Vegas scores and odds advantage with Mike North starts right now. I am Aldo Gandia, Mike Swingman, and it is Wednesday. That means Mike has three free picks for you today. He is 7-2 and two here at the barroom over the last three weeks, and he is red hot. We'll also talk extensively about the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers game at Lambeau Field next Sunday. We'll also talk about the New England Patriots, and guess what? Do we have another cheating scandal on our hands? We'll uh, look into the facts as we know them now and get Mike's opinion. And I'm sure Mike wants to talk a little baseball. His favorite team, the White Sox, are really raising eyebrows with their action or inaction, some people might say, at the winter meetings. And we'll touch on the Cubs as well. Let's bring Mike in now. Mike North, how are you, my friend? Oh, the best introduction in the business. Aldo, great job as usual, getting things set up here at the Bears Bar Room. Uh, the advantage, the Vegas scores and odds uh, advantage here on the Bears Bar Room Network. And let me just quickly get the business out of the way, folks, but it's good business. It's monkey business, but it's good business. It's about winning. It's about getting it done to free uh, pick line, one 504 2201 you can follow them at VSAO Sports, VegasScoresAndOdds.com. If you go there now, here's the beauty about wagering. Last night I gave out one game, okay? I went to bed in the fourth quarter with the Atlanta Hawks comfortably up eight, okay? I was getting nine points. All right, so I'm up 17. It went into overtime. I woke up this morning and the Heat won the game by outscoring them 18-4 to four in overtime. Now, was I aggravated? I understood. It's part of the game. I've won games like that, but that's the kind of thing that you got to play with, you got to live with every day, and that's the excitement of actually having action on games. You, you play the stock market, why wouldn't you come with me? I mean, you know what? You could go with my buddies at Tasty Trade. They'll give you good financial advice, but those same people know that I'm the best in the business when it comes to picking games. Because I used to uh, uh, work there with a Tom Sosnoff, a Nicky Batista, and they used to tell me, and a, and a Tony Bats, and all these other guys, all the great people there. El Presidente, so- Liz and Jenny, <laughs> all these great people over there. 
And they used to sort of, not all of them, Tom. Tom Sosnoff would scoff and say, come on. It's, it's, it's different in the market. Well, at the time I worked for him, although the market wasn't doing as well as it is now. I will say this. The market's good for long-term investments, for fast-term investments, daily. And you don't want to play the stock market if you're afraid to or the, the stuff's too high. Come to VegasScoresAndOdds.com. There's no difference. I will win for you. But last night was one of those days where the Dow all of a sudden would like plunge in the last 15 minutes. So I just want to let you know we don't win every single game. But we win most of them, including me being on this show at 25 and 18. Aldo, Aldo, back to you. Mike, wins and losses. It's all about wins and losses. And every once in a while you have a loss. But I'll tell you this. Right. Here at Bears Bar Room, you are 7-2 and two over the last three weeks, and that is hot. Those are the freebies. Those are the freebies that you're getting here at Vegas Scores and Odds Advantage with Mike North, and I accidentally told somebody in the chat room on our Monday show that you were 1-2 and two last week. No, you were 2-1, and one, so that brings you to 7-2 and two over our yep. last three shows. Congratulations, Mike. That is sweet, and you've got three more picks coming up in about three 30 minutes. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a good time, so stick around, folks. And uh, I'll tell you what, the podcast is doing great. Bears Bar Room's doing great. We have all these great shows, you know, from Buffon to the Fantasy Guys last night, my buddy Jeff Schwartz, uh, you know, to Aldo, uh, with all the production of the shows on the weekend. I mean, just a great, just go to the Bears Bar Room, just go and follow all the shows. The Twitter handle is up huge over the last six months. We've had like a 65% increase. So this is what we're talking about. This is the place to come not only for good shows presented to us by Vegas Scores and Odds, but good content and a ton of different opinions, and that's what you get. All right. Let's start talking about— That's about as good as it gets. Am I done now? I think uh, in terms of that portion of the show, yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, let's talk Bears and Packers because people are joining in the chat room by the dozens and they want to hear your thoughts on this upcoming game Sunday at Lambeau Field. It is the 200th meeting between this great rivalry between these two teams. We've got one quarterback who is red hot. We've got another one that's struggling. And guess what? Mitch Trubisky is the red hot one, and Aaron Rodgers is the one that's struggling. Is that not wild, Mike? <laughs> well, you know what? In the last two weeks, absolutely. But if you look at the overall record, oh, sure. <laughs> okay, then we have a little bit of a problem. We would trade places. Now, I'm going to tell you that. Uh, but that being said, I am not, and I said this on Monday's show, and folks, Monday's at noon, Wednesday's at noon. Just remember it, plug it in your phone, do what you got to do. App it. I don't care how many apps you got to go to. We're all over the place. But I'll say this, that I don't worry. I'm not worried about this game. I, I really am not. I've worried. Uh, maybe that's me being naive. Uh, but I think we're on the up tick. I think they're very good. But I think we can beat them. I think the defense is starting to find itself. Don't forget there was a change at the top of the defense at the beginning of the season. Nobody's even talked about the adjustments you've had to make, I mean, make at certain times, uh, you know, because of, of Fangio being gone. You know what I'm talking sure, about. Sure, sure. And, and, and I think we, that hasn't been talked about enough. They have played some different defense that I would prefer to go back to the old t things at times or, or the old style of defense at times. Uh, but you know what? You can't argue with the results. They're still. It's sort of like when Vince Tobin were still like doing good with points allowed. Well, that's what we did after Buddy Ryan left. But it did us no good. So I like that fearful element that I think is still there but was starting to wane, but with the Keem Hicks back, I think that's going to be good. I think that Rodgers is, uh, uh, you know, he's not intimidated. He likes playing against the Chicago Bears. He does. Uh, he, he's pulled out. That victory last year still haunts us. Mm. Uh, you know, it still does. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, uh, you know, if the team got over that. I mean, we still had a great year. It showed us what we had. Uh, but this year, I think the Bears could cover this game. I think they can win it. Yeah, and so I looked back at um, 
at the at the first game of the season, the Bears lost uh, to the Green Bay Packers at Soldier right. Field, ten to three, and right. the defense in that game had a really great game. They got five sacks, which five the Packers have given up thirty one sacks this season, and five of them against the Chicago Bears. And so we're catching the Packers now when their offense is struggling a bit. And this is Green Bay Packers coach Matt Lafleur talking about the struggles with. With his offense after a weak performance against the Washington Redskins defense last Sunday. Well, I think anytime you don't perform up to the level that you expect or the standard, uh, you're always concerned about that. But, you know, fortunately, we were able to get the win, and that's ultimately what this is all about. And we got to just make sure that we learn from whatever mistakes we made and move forward because we got another tough opponent coming in yeah they you know that bottom line is doesn't matter if your offense is playing poorly as long as you get a win but I got a feeling I'm with you Mike I got a good feeling about this game now the the Bears versus the Packers straight up they've they've had some problems over the last 10 games I had a stat here let me see if I can find the Chicago look at you doing your homework (laughs) digging up things like a gumshoe like a detective remember QT Hush nobody remembers QT Hush they remember that Dick Tracy, if you will. Yeah. They remember, you know, the thin man. They remember <laughs> right. a lot of different detectives. They don't remember QT Hush. Who is You're that? in that vein. Who is who is QT Hush? I never heard of him. It was a it, he was a, a a cartoon on the Dick Tracy show back in the day when we were kids on WGN with Ray Rayner. As, oh. uh, do you remember the Dick Tracy show? Or yeah. were you busy running from games? Uh, I was busy running from my dad with the belt. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. You know what? Running from your dad with the belt is fruitless because eventually you get caught. Oh, uh, yeah. You can't. You can yeah. only run for so Sort of long. like Cool Hand Luke. You hear the dogs barking. They're coming closer and closer. You're done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. The Bears are 2-9 and nine straight up in their last 11 games when playing on the road against Green Bay. So that gives you pause. But you have taught me something about trends. Trends don't matter. They don't mean anything. Exactly. Go ahead. Uh, You know why? Because you could talk about trends. And you know where they're really useless in college football. In Mm. 1982, so-and-so beat this team by this many. Wait a minute. These kids weren't even alive, okay? So I get all that. I do understand that Green Bay has owned the Bears. There's no doubt about it, and it is a disturbing trend. That being said, what happens if after this game it's 3-9? and nine? You know what I mean? Yep. It can be 2-9 and nine somewhere. Okay, they win one every five. One out of every five and a half games. This could be the one. That's all I'm telling you. And I'm looking at the line, and the Bears are currently four-point underdogs. And it, believe me, it would be easy, and I have not, uh, and I looked at this game. I, I got to save this game because it might be a service to play on Vegas scores and odds. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Just looking at it, it would be so easy to take the Packers. Yeah. So easy with four points. Aaron Rodgers at home. You know, Green Bay. You know, as, you know Lambeau. The snow. Rodgers talking about how he loves the weather. And the Bears, quite frankly – Beating Dallas, but you know what? People are starting to pan Dallas. So is the Bear win that impressive? I do know this. This team is good enough to beat the Green Bay Packers. That's all I'm going to say. I'm with you 100%. Let's talk a little bit about the offense. Allen Robinson, the wide receiver who you praised greatly on our last show, he Mm -hmm. was asked, what are the keys for the offense to do well against the Green Bay Packers? And he cited three reasons. The audio is a little tough because they're in the locker room here, but uh, I think we can get through this. It's about a 20-second bite. Here it comes. Starting fast, you know, um, having production on first down, you know, it's always good getting some first downs on first down, you know, being good on third down, you know, and also capitalizing um, um, in the red zone. You know, I thought we've done that over the past few weeks as well as far as coming away with points. You know, so we just got to keep those three things up, you know, um, and I think that, I mean, those are big factors in the offense, you know, first down plays, third down plays, and red zone efficiency. 
first down plays, get productive on first down plays, move the chains on first downs, convert third downs, and be effective in the red zone. Like the Bears were against the Cowboys, the only blemish, of course, was that uh, interception that Trubisky threw in the end zone. So those are the keys. I will also add this. Run the ball. Run the ball with David Montgomery. This Green Bay Packers defense is allowing rushing yards up the yeehaw, and so that's a great way to take advantage of that excellent pass rush that they have. So let's get David Montgomery the ball early and often. Well, first of all, when you're hearing that they're allowing that kind of yardage that it gets to the yeehaw stage, then uh, <laughs> then you you know exactly what we're talking about here. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, the yeehaw stage is a, a, a dramatic stage, and it's a dangerous stage to be in if you are a defense. Look, the Bears have to balance it, although they really do. And I'd like to see them start the game with a pass, about a five, six-yard pass underneath, uh-huh. and then – Give it to Montgomery on the second down, okay? Because you now only have second and four. Mm-hmm. If he can get that first down, you've already early, after two plays, set up some play-action possibilities. You've already told Green Bay that you could get a first down fast against a defense mm-hmm. that has struggled, like you said, mm-hmm. in the running game. And you start establishing a more balanced attack where I don't want to see – Look, if you see 35 running plays and 22 pass plays, we know we won. If you see what I think we're going to see, 25 or 30 and 30 or whatever amount of time, maybe about even, then I think it's going to be a close game, which I think it might be. I, um, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a close game. And I think it's... You know what else is besides Yeehaw? Uh-huh. I'll tell you what, Yin Yang. That if you get the game running game going in my world, it's yin yang, my friend. <laughs> You're getting don't yeehaw and yin yang us. <laughs> we know what we're talking about, Eldo and I. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're getting yeah, all, exactly. You're getting all Zen on us now. Yin yang. That's <laughs> right. I have the whiz. Yin yang and yeehaw. I love it. I love it. All right. Mitchell Trubisky's quarterback coach, Dave Ragone, was asked about Mitchell Trubisky's improvement, and he offered a a number of reasons. One of the things I want you to comment on is what Ragon said about Mitchell's vision and that he is seeing things better. This is Dave Ragon, quarterback's coach for the Chicago Bears. There is a week's progress. Let's start it from the beginning, not the end. (laughs) To be able to see something just happen probably within four or five seconds, spit it right back at me without having to see the pitchers, I think that in, in itself provides clarity communication for the quarterback to me that hey I am seeing the same things and if we're not right doesn't mean I'm always right if we're not let's go talk about it and I think the communication specifically uh, from what he's seeing to why he's doing what he's doing uh, obviously is getting better as the weeks progress. Mike I think that is so important that you can recall something immediately after it happens you don't have to look at the tape or anything like that you know I used to play golf with a guy this guy was a great golfer a scratch golfer and this guy I would ask him hey I, I missed what the, your score on the fifth hole some seven holes ago, ago he was saying he would say well I hit one on the right center of the fairway my approach shot was a little short of the green I chipped it right by the hole and then I put it in for a par his recall Call of things was just amazing, and that's what Ragone is talking about Trubisky, that his recall on plays is getting better. I gotta imagine this is about maturity and a quarterback getting into a comfort level uh, com- comfort level at the NFL. What do you think? I think uh, you're right, and I think, by the way, Dave Ragone, I mean, I just want to thank him. I uh, when he, I believe it was the same guy that was quarterbacking at Louisville. I that's, won a big that's game correct. That once. Yeah, that's yeah, him. I, I, I didn't even know he was the assistant coach of the Bears, to be honest with you, because, you know, uh, I just it just went over my head. But I started thinking about Dave going off the top of my head. I go, wait a minute. This guy played at Louisville, I think, and uh, I, he won me some money. So nice. I'd like to get the word out that I want to thank him very much. I think I bought a, a jacket, a velvet jacket with the money. Oh, anyway, nice. yeah, all I'm going to say is this. Yes, he's seeing the field better, okay? Uh, he's improving. I think that basically they're doing a lot of underneath patterns. Yeah. Somebody said that uh, his average pass in the air was 3.5 yards. Mm-hmm. So you better be able to see who you're throwing to. <laughs> uh, <Really? laughs> 
I mean, basically. Yeah, look, but he's doing what he has to do if you're passing underneath a zone. That, that's how long. I, if they're playing you on the zone, I'll, I'm going to hit guys underneath all day long. I don't care. How, and if they run after the catch 12 yards, that's great. Exactly. I mean, a, I mean think about it. A bubble screen is really a sideline pass, or, yeah. or, or sometimes behind the line. Right. So they get all their yards, these quarterbacks, after the catch with our receivers like like uh, Rob. Uh, how, how do you like the way I'm calling him Rob now? After I had that guy for two years. No. Now we're buddies. Yeah, he's coming over to the house for Christmas. Um, but I have high praise for him. He's becoming one of the leaders on the offense, uh-huh. which I like. And the thing I love about him, he's not a big mouth diva. Yeah. He just goes and plays his game yep. and gets the job done. Yeah, he, you're absolutely right. And I've got his numbers here somewhere. Allen Robinson this year has caught 76 passes. He's on his way to 100. He's got 898 yards. He's got only three touchdowns, but that's not his fault. And l- let's remind people that he signed a three-year, $42 million contract at the beginning of last year. He is already kind of giving hints that he'd love to have a contract extension. He told the Chicago sometimes that he'd love to finish his career here with the Chicago Bears he, and he would love to finish his career by being the all-time leading wide receiver in catches and yards in franchise history. I love the way this guy talks about his affinity for the team and obviously there's some negotiation going on there, but I really think he loves it here in Chicago and I think him and Mitch are starting to grow a rapport. I'd love to see the Bears sign him to a nice five, seven year contract and pour some money into him. What do you think? I agree. Uh, I don't know how many years you give the guy that's up to the Bears. I don't want to see this guy leave. Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, can you imagine if he leaves? I was against this guy. Yeah. And now he had the highest price I could ever give him. And people know what this means because since I've been on the air in this town, in my hometown, and even before I was, when I owned hot dog stands and you know, I was going to acting school and playing ball for Truman College and running the streets. I was pretty sharp on the Bears. And my, but, but as far as radio goes, I'm, I'm about 73 74% accurate on my assessments of the Bears. And, and, and the best praise I can give this guy is by telling him I was wrong about him because I'm not that wrong about the Bears. That's right. Most of the time. Mm-hmm. And, and I was dead wrong about this guy. And, and, and now that you found him, tie him up. And I, you know what? He's not a guy that's dogging the team by saying, well, if the Bears don't want to come to the table, you know, I'll go look somewhere else. He's being a gentleman. He knows who's paying his check. So really, I mean, I've gone from not wanting him and trying to block his entrance at O'Hare to basically, you know, I'll come over and help you out if you need the house painted. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so um, uh, I think he's a great addition to the squad. Yeah. And, and I think he was a sharp pickup. By Ryan Pace, and some of Pace's pickups are coming through. We always hear about the uh, ma- the this or ones. that, yeah. or this guy or that guy, or Shaheen, <laughs> which I've done the same thing. But I, you know, I'm also conscious of the fact that he did pick up Robinson, that he uh, has made some good draft picks, uh, and that, that the team is rounding into form. So let's see what happens. All right. Hey, Mike. Um- in the chat room is America's team. That's my buddy James Kessel is a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. He has, been, he has been so depressed over the Bears kicking the butts out of the Cowboys. Right. <laughs> and he wants to know it's that the Cowboys are getting one point at Dallas over the Rams. What do you think about that? You think that he could maybe put some of the mortgage money on that game, and he could uh, it'll cheer him up if the if, if the Cowboys win that game? <laughs> well, all I could tell him is this: that Jimmy, you know I love you. Off first blush, I would say to myself, I'd probably take your team on this. I'm trying to figure out how they could even be an, a favorite. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, that being said, if you want to get the the scoop, what you usually have to do is where I used to pick the NFL games on this great show with my buddy Eldo, who I love, last year, and we made history. Eldo can always say, when somebody says, hey, I'm so-and-so, I I played in the Giants organization, or hey, I was a backup singer with the Stones. Eldo could always say, (laughs) I was with Mike North when he went 18-1-1. That's right. (laughs) And nobody in the country has ever done that, as far as documented on air 
whether it's radio or podcast. That's it never right. happened. That's right. And it ended up putting everybody on the map and made me, made me, you know, get my visibility heightened. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You got to go to iHeart if you're living outside of Chicago mm-hmm. and press ESPN 1000 on Friday because it might be one of my games. Or you got to wait for a free pick from me maybe on this game at VSAO Sports. Or it might be a service play at Vegas Scores and Odds. You know? Yep. I don't know yet. So, but off first blush, I'm telling you now, I like, I would say Dallas if, if my life depended on it because it doesn't make any sense. Well, James is a loyal listener to the Odds Couple on ESPN 1000 on go. Fridays. So he'll be listening in on Friday. And let's talk about a couple more things. Wait, we- is, James, is James from Dallas, though? No, he he's actually was born in Wisconsin. And and he, so he's never been a Packers fan, though. He grew up a Cowboys fan. And then he moved to Chicago to go to college here at Columbia College and is now working professionally as a film director for, for commercials and stuff. Oh. Yeah, so. So uh, Jay, I, well, I, I'm trying to talk him out of being a Cowboys fan, but he's a very stubborn guy. <laughs> well, my brother Danny, God bless him. I mean, he's still still ticking up there in uh, South Carolina. He was uh, a Cowboys fan. So I had to put up with this crap growing up in the 70s. My God, it mm. was a nightmare. Yeah. I, the Bears were absolutely <laughs> dreadful. Oh, oh and gosh. Dallas was absolutely fantastic. Oh. I mean, you know, I had to deal with him from the uh, 60s on. Starbuck, Don Meredith. Oh, oh. I mean. Kill me now. I mean, you know, <laughs> what could I fight back with? He'd go Randy White. I'd go George Seals. That doesn't impress anybody. You know, he'd go Bob Lilly. I'd go Dick Evie. What difference does that make? I mean, he won on – they had individual players. They had some sh- uh, skins on the wall. And yeah. the Bears – we're just putrid. So that's just the way it was. Oh, my goodness. I remember an early uh, a Cowboys-Bears game at Soldier Field. This was back when they had the Astral Turf. That Astral Turf at Soldier Field that was rock hard. What garbage it was. Oh, my what goodness. What garbage. And it was on the, the field was a crowd. Yes. So the, you were running downhill if that's you did right. a 10-yard out. It was ridiculous. <laughs> that's right. And, what a garbage ball field that was. And, and, and Tom Landry had this crazy idea that he was going to alternate quarterbacks on every play. The new I quarter- remember. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? It was Roger Staubach and Craig Morton. He had two good quarterbacks, and so he had them bring in the play as opposed to doing the signals. I think, if I remember correctly, I think the Bears won. I think the experiment lasted just that one week, and, and uh, Landry settled yep. on uh, Staubach, and Staubach goes on to have a Hall of Fame career. All right, a couple of more things regarding the Bears. Hart 4803. Um, I love her. I saw him on Twitter. He's awesome, isn't he? He has uh, brought up a really good point about this Bears offense. We are now getting more production out of the tight end position thanks to this yes. guy, J.P. Holtz, and then the rookie out of Princeton, Jesper Horstad. Forget about Trey Burton, and, and, and he's probably not coming back next year. That guy has just been a huge disappointment because of his injury issues and whatever. But – this, yeah, and this, whatever. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I'm just going to let you go on there. I love you. <laughs> so I agree. As with- the plane hits the side of the mountain in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Harp. And, and Eldo looks at me going, should we just order one more cocktail before we go down? <laughs> exactly. Come on. And make it a double. <laughs> right. Well, who's the pilot? Well, it's a guy named Bert. He used to be t- tight end for the Bears. We, <laughs> we actually hug each other goodbye on that on that note. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Harp is right. If I'll just whistle while you're talking. <laughs> if we can get production out of the tight end this upcoming week at Green Bay, uh, we should we being the Bears should do very well, and I'll tell you one reason why. Why this inside linebacker crew for the for the Packers they are really weak against the run, yep. but also against passes those crossing passes. Uh, Screw have, them, we're gonna beat them. There you go. I like the attitude. We don't need to break it down. All right. Here's what I want to know. Uh-huh. You're a tight end for the Bears, okay? And your name is Jesper. <laughs> With all the names, wait. With all the names in the world, don't you ever sit down with your parents and ask them specifically? I've never met anybody named Jesper. If there was, it was a cartoon character. Right. A Jesper the crazy mouse or Jesper the nutty baboon. But I'm serious. 
<laughs> what was the Jesper? That's know. all I'd like to ask him. That would be a Pat Riley question after the Super Bowl <laughs> that if he caught the winning pass. I oh, Listen, I just want to ask you a question. You had seven catches for 103 yards and two touchdowns. You're the MVP of the Super Bowl. But if you had to do all over again, would you talk to your parents about the Jesper? <laughs> That would be it. We gotta and help the I'd kid out. out. <laughs> we gotta help the kid out and come up with a nickname for him. Cause yeah, this My just God, Jesper? <laughs> what, what did he do wrong? He must have given mom a kick right before he came out, and she said, "Jasper." Go look. We finally got a name. Uh, well, the kid went to Princeton, so they were probably banking oh that he God. was going to be a that's, doctor that's or something. <laughs> Jesper Your name won't be Mike. Your name won't be Joe. Your no. name won't be Steve. No. Your name will be – is he the guy from Trading Places? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Dan right. Aykroyd's character. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's that, that. They actually look a little like – Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Everybody is in the chat room, and they are waiting for this magic moment. Oh, my God. Yeah! Woohoo! This magic moment! Yeah! Don't make me talk about Jay Black and the American. This magic moment, one of the great songs of all time. The guy sang opera. That's the right. The guy was an opera singer, went rock, and then he sang songs like Tara Mia Moore and, and, and the song Walking in the Rain, the whole dog, the whole ball of wax. I think I love it. Brought to you by Vegas Scores and Odds. VSAO Sports. Tonight, yes, it's what everybody's been clamoring for. After the downfall I took last night with the Atlanta Hawks, I am going, it's hockey night at VSAO. All right. That's exactly right, ladies and gentlemen. It is hockey night. And in the theme of it being hockey night, I have a parlay up there right now. Cool. So go check out the packages. Check out the front page. I'm winning on all venues. Do what you got to do. I mean, because you know what? You're not going to make money. Look, if you want to go work the eight hours at Subway, if you want to go work at the athletic club as a receptionist, you notice how I have everybody with meager jobs. Have you noticed that? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, the guy that's, you know, but the big whales are the guys. The guys with the money are the ones that play yeah. at Vegas scores or not. Mm -hmm. It's not the people that need it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. It's the people that don't need it that just keep making money any way that they can. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, what's the date today, Aldo? Is it the 11th? Today is December 11th. Okay, I just lost my uh, handicap stuff there, so I killed enough time. And we're back! <laughs> well done. This, this, guy's right. a, this guy's a pro. Now, don't <laughs> I, I had the parlay up. Don't forget about that. But tonight, here's what I got. First, I am the Montreal Canadiens at minus 165. They're playing the Ottawa Senators. Montreal's 14 and 11. The Senators are 13 and 17. Now, that's not a bad record. No. I mean, it's it could be worse. Yet, the Canadians are overwhelming favorites. Anything over minus 150. This is 165. Now, right now, I'm 25 and 18 here on the Vegas Scores and Odds Advantage up Bears Bar Room. Why stop now? And I've been winning on all sports, any sport. Uh, so, hockey's been one of my stronger points. Last year, I was number one in hockey, 46 and 10. Don't play a whole lot of it, but I'm changing up tonight. I want to try something. We're up a little bit. We got a base. Let's try to increase it. So take Montreal, minus 165, ladies and gentlemen, as far as that goes. Also, in that same game, it's right now gone from six and a half to six. Okay? Uh, I believe... The over will come in on this game also. So if you get NHL Network or if you get uh, hockey on the uh, DirecTV package, uh, you can watch that game tonight if you're listening to the Bears Bar Room or out there and around the world and the country in Las Vegas, especially our home base in Chicago also. Another strong home base. Don't forget, Vegas scores and odds not only sponsors the uh, best Bears podcast and all around uh, networking podcast in in football and other sports uh they sponsor us but they also sponsor am 1000's odds couple with carmen defalco also 
Now Aldo goes, well, how's he going to top that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was wondering. That? It's exactly what I was wondering. I could tell. I could tell. I know, I know you. Well, it's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do something I don't usually do. I'm going to have a play on this game on Vegas scores and odds coming up. Make no mistake about it. But I'm also going to have a play on this game at Bears Bar Room. Bears Bar Room is the reason I'm here. The reason I'm doing what I'm doing in other venues. Okay? I'm taking the Army-Navy game. I'm taking the game here. I'm going to have the total on the game on VegasScoresAndOdds.com. Awesome. But for the game, ladies and gentlemen, I implore you to take Navy minus the 10 at 9-2 and two versus Army 5-7. and seven. Army's not bad. It's a big rivalry game. I, I think that Navy has given a boatload of points, but the system overwhelmingly gave me Navy. So Navy minus 10 in NCAA football. Montreal tonight minus 165 and the over six. Eldo, back to you. All right. I love the Canadians pick. I got a prediction. Wait, I got a prediction on that game, Mike. I predict that Max Domi is going to score two goals tonight. Two, not one, but two goals. I don't know why I feel that way, but but it's it's a it's a gut feel. It's just a gut feel. Who was Max Domi? (laughs) Yeah, the the hell is he? He was one of the best. He was yeah. He's with the Canadians. He had one of the best seasons in Canadian history last year, but this year he's been in a little bit of a slump. I think he's gonna. Start to break out of it this season. We'll see. Canadians All right, and let me I- ask you a question. All right. Because you and I go back to Belleville. Okay. We go back to Lafleur. We go back to, I mean, oh, uh, yeah. Yvonne Cordwire. Oh, my gosh, it. yes. Right? We yep. go back to Andre Richard. We yep. go back. Christ. I mean, we go back. Mahavalic. Remember him? Mahavalic. The brothers. The brothers, for God's sake. <laughs> That's right. I mean, crazy. Uh, you know, Gump Worsley. Uh, you know, Jenny is the goaltender. What's this guy's name? You think the system gives a rat's ass about, hey, Mike, here's the overwhelming win. And it's going to be because of somebody? <laughs> you just, now you put the fear of God in me. Oh, no. Telling me this Max Domi guy <laughs> hasn't scored, uh, you know, since Custer was a corporal. I don't know what to do. <laughs> what the hell's going on over here? Hey, your no, system I'm works. Good, and I'm pre- <laughs> I am impressed you actually know somebody on the Canadians. <laughs> I, I still love I used the, to know the whole lineup when oh. they had six teams. I knew every player on every team. I know, every Mike. Every player on every team, period. Mike, same same thing. I mean, I could yeah. I could still tell you the lineup of the sixty nine Cubs. I can tell you right. who was on the, the 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 first three lines of the Canadians and Blackhawks in that uh, Stanley Cup final back in nineteen seventy. But you're absolutely right. There are so many teams now in all of the leagues that it's just so hard to keep track of it. Keep up. I'm sorry. I mean, I heard about this Watts White Sox guy, No Mark Abaro. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk Marano. about it. I don't even know who the guy is, and then I'm hearing White Sox fans who have to go look him up on Wikipedia, saying it's an okay trade. <laughs> is anything ever gonna suck for a team that wins 72 games? <laughs> I mean, the way White Sox people talk. Thank God today there's some White Sox people, including jersey wearers, mm-hmm. that are absolutely saying to themselves, "That's it." <laughs> Instead of trying to come up. With some sort of crazy reason to like this? Give me a break. Guy hit 19 home runs with the ball being a Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yep. I didn't have no idea. I thought we picked up. I thought Garcia Perro was making a comeback. I had no idea. Yeah. And then I had to find out. And because he hits Ronaldo Lopez out of the park, we go and get the guy. Yes, I know. Isn't that crazy? What the hell is going on over here? <laughs> yeah, this guy, uh, Nomar uh, Mazara, I believe is the pronunciation of his name. He's six foot four. He did hit that 550 foot home run off of Lopez. I remember it, but it's off Ronaldo Lopez. Look, I remember. <laughs> I remember a trade the Blackhawks made back in the day. And mm-hmm. I think if you're old school, just bear with me for a second because Elto. We'll start to break out in a rash. Once he's <laughs> we traded guys like Pie Face McKenzie and Kenny Hodge yeah. and Phil Esposito. Phil Esposito, yep. Okay, and Freddie Stanfield. Yeah. Because, and we 
we traded f- with Boston all the time based on how guys like Pitt Martin yeah. and Gio Ferrat did against us. Yep, exactly. And, and, and we did them. There was one problem. They weren't playing against <laughs> us anymore. That's right. <laughs> so this whole thing haunts me. <laughs> that we're picking up a guy that picked up one of the that hit one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball for 550 feet. It's <laughs> distressing to Lopez that he's the the guy that's the reason. I'm hearing White Sox scribes, and I use it lo- I use that term loosely. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing White Sox scribes advancing. He had a 500 foot home run off a starter that we're counting on. <laughs> My God. Oh, that God is speed. hilarious. I'm, God speed. I'm telling you something, Mike. This signing of this kid, this left-handed hitter who has performed below expectations as a hitter and is a very slow defensive outfielder, and he's going to be oh, playing no. right field, this smacks of what you were preaching about regarding Jerry Reinsdorf. He's yep. playing for second place. Exactly. This and is nobody's a... being fooled. And I hear people saying, well, good. We'll wait around when, to get season tickets now. Finally, these White Sox fans are waking up. I was having a little yep. discussion with a scout last night on Twitter. And the guy says, this, is, this rebuild's going to work and it's going to work. And I said, well, when's it going to be done? He goes, 2022. We were told 2020, three years ago. Right, right, yeah. It's a bunch of crap. White Sox fans are, are, are getting smart. The McDowell, Solomon, Unison of two guys saying that Jerry Reinsdorf only wants to finish in second place is so underscored in this town. But the White Sox fans that want to listen, listen to me. I will not back a team. I will be honest about the team. If they do well, I'll say it. Eldo knows that. I don't care. Like Mankata, God bless him. But I will not pay a penny to any guy who says second place is my goal. Yep. Period. It, it's infuriating. As somebody who has been passionately following the White Sox recently, I am just so angry that Rick Hahn, everybody was looking forward to the winter meetings because the expectation was is that Rick Hahn was going to spend some of that White Sox money so and come back with a good pitcher. And he's coming back with this kid who has been a major disappointment. I just don't get it. I mean, I do get it. <laughs> you, you, you open my eyes to it, but I'm just very, very disappointed. And I'm actually thinking about maybe I'll root for the Brewers or somebody. I don't know. I shouldn't say well, that. Well, I mean, it's getting to the point where you're drawing the same 18,000. They haven't increased their fan base. Mm-hmm. You know, 18 to 20,000. I'll give them, they've gone up a couple thousand. Right. They're trying to expand their base. There's no doubt. They'd like to bring in more Latino fans. I don't blame them. Right. They're trying to capture that market. You're Latino. You know about this. Uh, and, and, and on surface, you see that they're p- trying to tailor a team that's uh, that can appeal to, to a cross-section of the city. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. But by your consciously doing that, is that going to make you a winner? Who does that? I mean, you know, bottom line is, I don't care if you're winning – and your team is Latino, if your team is mixed, if your team is white. <laughs> it right. don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do I care if the Bears are all black? Do I care if the Bears are all white? No. Do I care that the Bears win? Yes. Absolutely. I could care less about that crap. So, I mean, I mean, I just get a kick out of it because it, the White Sox marketing, and they've been run by the same jugheads for so long, I remember a few years back that there was an article. I think it was in Cranes. I want to say Cranes. Good paper. You know. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah. I mean, they do a good job, and they tell you what's going on there. You know, and they dress it up a little, but that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember them saying, socks to have a bunch of new beers, craft beers. Mm-hmm. Okay? Right. And then also the plans – to expand on the Latino base, okay? Mm-hmm. Those two don't go together. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I had a, I had a Puerto Rican 
a pal of mine, Mike LeBron, uh-huh. he never said to me, let's go drink some craft beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he said, let's go drink some tequila. That's right. You know? <laughs> and so, um, and so, so, good- so, I mean, I just get a kick out of it. They try to, <laughs> they try to please everybody, and, and at the same time, just put a winning team out there, and they're not trying to do that. So you can introduce all the new food items in a helmet. You got nachos in a helmet. Yeah. You got new mascots. Uh-huh. You know, you know the scoreboard lights up lighter. I, it's all BS. It's second place or bust. Well, and you know what, Mike? That is kind of the history of the White Sox since I've been following them. Do you remember when yep. Bill Veck owned the team? He, he, they put more thought into the entertainment before the game, after the game, the exploding scoreboard, than in acquiring quality players. It seemed for many seasons. It was so frustrating. It's been so frustrating to, to be a White Sox fan. You know who we got rid of when, we had, when Bill Veck was there? We got 59. I get it. But then we got rid of the future. We got rid of Earl Batty. We got rid of John Romano, two of the best catchers in the 60s. We got rid of Norm Cash, one, an all-star first baseman. We got rid of big-time players, man, because Vec didn't, uh, you know, Vec didn't have the wherewithal to keep some of these guys, even back then. Yep. You know, yep. we made them in trades, and we got back – Oh, I remember the 64 Sox. We had Ken Boyer. We had Rocky Calavito. You know, no, the 68 Sox, 69 Sox, 70 Sox, right. older guys. Right, right. We had, remember those guys? Sure. I, I, yeah, I loved them eight years ago. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then we got them at the end. And that's what they tried to do. That's... That was under the, uh, when, when Arthur Allen owned them. Right. Kevin Janoski in the chat room says, and he's a diehard White Sox fan. I know he, he is. says, but craft beer appeals to me, Mike. Yeah, but the problem is, <laughs> I get it, but who goes to the ball game? I, I never went to a game and said, you know what? Thank God I'm going to the game because they got a certain type of beer. Yeah. I never did. Uh, I never did. Yeah, I, I, you know what? The other problem is, Mike, is those craft beers cost 15, 20 bucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, Give me a bud. <laughs> Give me a do- Like her, James Earl Jones, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, says in Field of Dreams, it, when he's at Fenway, uh, a dog and a beer. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Don't get me, uh, you know, uh, your, your, your best German lager. Okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> But you know what I mean? I, I don't care. I'm going to the game to see a winning team. And that's been lost on the south side. And I got people giving me an argument. Who been, the Sox haven't been in the playoffs since 2008. That's right. You know? That's right. So please, dear Lord, the only good news coming out of the White Sox is Hawk Harrelson. Well, that's the only good news. Uh, I was going to save that for the end, but let's talk about it now. Congratulations. We no, let's we do it now. It let's do it now. And I, then we'll finish with the Patriots story. All right. Um. Hawk Harrelson, congratulations, the winner of the Ford C. Frick Award. I think this means induction into the Hall of Fame, correct, Mike? Yeah, he's going to the Hall of Fame. I had the pleasure, listen to this. First of all, when I started at the score, and he came to the, and the score started up, he he came to the very first golf outing, Mm -hmm. and he had game. And Pearsall was there. All these guys were there the very first one in 92 and he and I became quick friends and Billy Pierce was there and just just a great time Mm -hmm. and he and I became friends but he and I went out at it on the air often and that's the key thing often he didn't duck me right he didn't duck anything he would try to dress things up he was a homer I knew that even before he you know he admitted it and, and you know what? There was a vote taken uh, a few years back, some survey that said he was the most biased announcer in the business. But he made no apologies for that. Yep. You know, Jerry Reinsdorf made him a GM. It didn't work out. And and then he basically saved talk a little by, by making him out on the broadcast team. Mike, I witnessed. Because if you decide to let him go, then what happens? Mm-hmm. I, I witnessed your friendship with Hawk Harrelson when you had him on as a guest here on The Advantage, and you right. 
called him a homer. You said, Hawk, you've been a homer. You can't deny it. And he laughed. He laughed it off. And he said, right. sure, I'm a homer. I love the team. And you guys had such a great rapport. I was actually going to pull that sound, but the word came out so late, I, I didn't have access to it right away. So what I did is I cut together a minute and a half highlight package of some of Hawk's greatest calls. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh-huh. You could have had me and Hawk. I know, I and know. Now I got to listen to put on the board and yes and gas and mercy. Okay, I'm, I, I'm kidding. Go ahead, my friend. Uh, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I think you're going to get uh, some goose pimples on his final call here when he uh, talks about Mark Burley's, when he calls Mark Burley's perfect game. So here's the highlight package. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. At the wall. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Two run bomb by Quentin. And this game is tied at four. Mercy. Mercy. Line drive. Call your sons. Call your daughters. Call your friends. Call your neighbors. Mark Burley has a perfect game going to the ninth. That ball hit deep in the left center field. Wise back, back. Makes the catch! What a play! Wade Wise makes the catch! What a play by Wise! Mercy! A great catch by Dwayne Wise! Under the circumstances, one of the greatest catches I have ever seen in 50 years in this game. One to go. Alexei. Yes. 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 History. Tell me you don't have goose pimples, Mike. Tell me. <laughs> I'm so mad because we don't have a – no, I'm just getting – listen to this. That is a guy that came to play. An entertainer. That's what he was. He he was the franchise for a few years. Mm-hmm. He was the cover boy. Yep. I have a lot of respect for Hawk. I also went at it with Hawk many times, and we always remained friends because Hawk got it with me. Hawk loved me, man. He still does. Yeah, I you know, know. I got a, an authority that he mentioned my name a couple times on the telecast. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and a lot of people, certain people, didn't like it from that. You know, and he and he and he might have heard about it. Hey, you know, keep it on the low. He said something like, "Mike North loves this town more than anybody mm-hmm. that I've ever seen." Okay, yeah. He always wasn't afraid to give somebody a shout out. He's Hawk Harrelson. He's the best. And you know what? He, he, in that thing right there, in that little brief thing there, that embodied him. Because, you know what? If it was a bad game, he'd sound bad. Yep. If it was a bad game, he'd be silent. Because yep. he was in the dugout. Mm-hmm. He was on the buses with these guys. He was in the clubhouse, and he's a former player. That's why he didn't criticize too much right. the players, like Harry and Pierce all used to do. Right. So he knew what it was like, okay? And, and, but he also expressed disappointment in the tone of his voice. And when something good went on, look how he jacked his game up. Yep. If, if he would have been with a team that had five, six pennants or made the playoffs on a consistent basis – he would have been even bigger than he was. I agree. Even bigger than he was because he had to endure some bad years. And, 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 and at times it sounded like he was nuts because he'd say, you're going to like this guy. And I'd say to myself at home, <laughs> no, I'm not. You know, and it, and it would end up happening that way. Yep. I mean, you know, he's big on everybody. Yeah. So 
that's what hurt him because at times he had to compromise because he was not going to dog the players. Yep. There, are, uh, I remember many times tuning into the White Sox game, and, all, and I didn't hear a single word. Like 30 seconds would go by, 60 right. seconds, 90 seconds. I'm like, are the microphones working? Is there some technical problem? And then I look at the score, I go, oh, they're losing. <laughs> but my big argument with him every, for, almost, for almost 25, 30 years was a broadcaster shouldn't go silent when things are going bad. I, that was you. my big argument yeah. with him. Yeah. But he'd say, he'd say to me, Mikey, let me tell you something. <laughs> what you don't hear, <laughs> when you don't hear me talk, let me tell you something. No. When you don't hear me talk, the fans know. Yeah, I did know that he was pissed. But you'd like to hear him say, what did this team do to prepare for this game? Why are we playing so bad? You know, he never did none of that. And you know what? It worked for him, and I'm happy for him, and I love him. Yep. Congratulations, Hawk Harrelson. Uh, we, uh, we are really happy for you. Hall of Fame, that is a tremendous honor. All right. I wanted yep. to get a little Cubs talk in here before we finish with hey, the hey, Patriots. Holy mackerel. We got no money left. We blew <laughs> exactly. it all on a hotel. <laughs> That's right. Gallagher's way is going to be there for you. It's going to be there for you. You can play catch with your kid. You know, I mean, they blew all the money on everything around. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what do you think about these rumors that they're going to trade Chris Bryant, who is a player I know you like, despite the fact that you were disappointed with his play last season, but I know you like him. What would you think if the Bears, um, excuse me, the Cubs unload Chris Bryant? What happens if we get a, a real good pitcher and another player? Well, because you know what? what I, I, you know what? I'm over Chris Bryant. He does some good things, but he doesn't stick out like a Arenado type. I, uh, yeah. I know that, you know, or a, other third base, or a Rendon. I'm sorry. I'd rather have Rendon. I'd rather have Arenado. That doesn't make him a bad player, but it just seems to me too many one for fours, too many. Th- and I know people are going to come out with these stats, war and uh, you know, to me, war is what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Okay, that's all. I mean, I, I don't give a rat's ass about all that. When I see him play, does he make me go wow? He made me go wow in 2015, 16, whenever it was. He hasn't made me go wow as much lately, period. Yeah, and, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I, this guy... To me, he has underperformed badly after right. his MVP season. And now there's also talk that uh, uh, Anthony Rizzo, who has expressed that he wants to f- play his entire career here at, at, at the, uh, with the Cubs, he might be a little bit upset that the Cubs aren't talking to his agent about extending his contract. Do you think that is just agent speak, or do you think there might be some truth that the Cubs might want to unload both Rizzo and Chris Bryant? These guys were supposed to win every year. Right. They have not won every year. But they're media-friendly, so the media will be on their side. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Zeke Elliott, Dak Prescott, Bryant, Rizzo. Two good players. Can they get to the promised land again? No. I believe this Cub team is one hit wonders and the good teams know when to get rid of their stars, period. The Dodgers used to do it. Guys like Garvey, guys like Say, guys like like Russell, guys like Lopes, guys like, you know, just guys that that are good. But you know what? Bryant's had injuries. I like Rizzo, but to me, he just, he goes into stretches. They're both streak hitters. Yes. So what can you get for these guys? in return to help build your club right. because I don't think they're like the 85 Bears. I predicted this two years ago. I said it on Twitter today. I'm very, I said, you can ask Aldo Gandia when we first started together. I said there was a possibility that the Cubs of 2016 could be one-hit wonders like, like Strawberry Alarm Clock or Lloyd Price. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. The one-hit wonders, and that's what they are. Yeah. That's what so it looks like. So you got like. the yep. Bears, you got the old five socks, and you got this team. One hit wonders. So now get rid of these guys because you know what? It became a country club. And now David Ross is their manager. He says he's going to have a talk to with them and what he expects. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be here. That's correct. That is correct. So it's a bad deal, man. 
You know what worries me though, if that if they unload those guys, is that they might try to replenish a farm system that has been depleted with all of the trades. I mean, three, four, five years ago, this team had the the highest ranked uh, farm system, and now they've got one of the lowest graded farm systems. And so they might trade these guys for a bunch of young players, and in in essence, do Theo Epstein would will do what he did to build that World Series team, which is virtually like tank for three or four years in order to rebuild the team. And if he does that, I am going to be really one upset Chicago sports fan because I hated those three, four years when they were purposely and obviously tanking to collect high draft picks. Well, that's what they're going to end up doing here, I think, Uh, in the long run. Because you know what? It, It looks to me that their expectations of more than one World Series are over. Mm. And their pitching got old. You got guys like Quintana who are hittable. Lester now is going to have another year on him. I mean, you know, Cole Hamels is gone. It's over. It's over. Can you believe it? I had this team winning two or three in 10 years. It's over. So they failed. The team failed, and they fell short of expectations. And you can blame Madden for that, too. You, you know, they're lucky they won the one. Can you imagine if they didn't win the one? Yeah. <laughs> Where would they be? And Madden almost so, blew that one. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, I, I just look at that team. I, I have faith that they could they can rebuild. But uh, you know what? I don't think they want to pick up anybody big right now. I don't think they feel they have a good enough team. Yeah. I really don't. And uh, you know what? I, I think that's a mistake. Now, now that doesn't mean Bryant's going to be gone. These might be rumors, you know. Correct. And if, you know what, I'm I'm inclined to give him another year. That's just me. Give him another year with Ross. Don't get rid of him now and make Ross look like a bad guy. Right. That's the problem too. Is you hate to see them bring in this young manager, yeah. inexperienced manager, and then th- trade away or get rid of two of your bi- your biggest ball players. <laughs> well, look at what the Yankees did today. They go after Cole. Oh my goodness. You know, I mean, you know what? For three, and and and, and then Strasburg is re-signed by the Nationals. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no way that our teams want to go after. Him. And then when I read that Ricketts. You know, we're 100% off budget. Well, you know what? Over budget. You needed a new ballpark. You know what? If you didn't if you didn't rehab it, you're going to have to build a new one or move. Yeah. So I don't want to hear the crying, number one. And number two, I looked up what he's worth. He's worth a billion. His dad's worth two billion. Oh, my goodness. He's worth thir- him and his dad alone, not even counting the other kids, wow. are worth $3 billion. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you crazy? And I got to feel, I got, and Cup fans got to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. And then you got a guy on the other side of town that's worth about two billion bucks, and he's picking up Nicky Mananero or whatever his name is. <laughs> I thought it was Scarface. I thought it was the guy's name in, Scar, in Scarface. What was his name? Yo, Montana, Tony Montana. Tony Montana. <laughs> Play, played by Al Pacino. What an actor. Oh, my gosh. Hey, you I'm ma- watching The Freshman tonight. Oh, uh, you're The Irishman. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The <laughs> Freshman was with Marlon Brando and Matthew Broderick. Oh, that th- was good, too. Oh, I hated that movie. <laughs> oh. You didn't like it because he was Vito Corleone? <laughs> exactly. I, I just didn't get it. He, but- was, a, he was a slum lord. He was a slum, slummy Vito Corleone <laughs> with Matthew Broderick and Bruno Kirby. No, no, I'm going to watch The Irishman tonight, so don't say anything. I'll wait and see. Well, I, I'll uh, see how everything is. I'm a little worried. Have you seen it yet? I've seen it, so I can't wait to talk to you about All it right. after you see All it. Right. Hey, you yeah. brought up the Yankees real quick. And just a quick note uh, regarding the Yankees. If they uh, complete this deal with Garrett Cole, which they, they will, between the salaries that they've invested into Giancarlo uh, Stanton and, and Cole, they're payroll, though, just for those two guys, will be higher than the entire Chicago White Sox team payroll. <laughs> that and that says it all. <laughs> it, it, it's really sad. And White Sox fans, here's the scary thing. I'm hearing Bulls attendance is starting to plummet. Yeah. I am hearing that the White Sox fans now, at least on social media, right. are starting to get pissed off. Right. This is all happening uh, as, as now the plan, the Reinsdorf plan, and the media's plan to underscore it and not talk about the second place finishing thing, I think has affected this team. I think the fact that they are all talk, no action, both teams has affected uh, the Reinsdorf empire. And uh, quite frankly, I, I saw this coming years ago when I told them 
don't trust the people that you have run in your teams. There you don't. go. I agree. I agree. Good advice from Mike North. All right, let's uh, finish up with talking about the New England Patriots. Controversy follows this team almost every year. What a bunch of rats. What (laughs) happened to my guys? Well, now it appears that somebody in the press box at Cleveland was spotted by uh, uh, Cincinnati Bengals advance scouts of a uh, of a guy focused his camera on the sideline while they were they filmed eight minutes of their offensive signals the Cincinnati Bengals offensive signals and that is uh, against the rules and so the the Patriots are playing the Bengals this week so the, uh, obviously people are thinking okay the, the, uh, Bill Belichick has done this before videotaping uh, signals from the sideline well Bill Belichick went on WEEI radio and denied the allegations that he or the team was cheating this is Bill Belichick yeah I heard about this and um, you know evidently this is uh, our production people on the TV show that were there um and we have absolutely nothing to do. We have absolutely nothing to do with anything that they produce, direct, or or shoot, or anything. I've never even seen any of their tapes or anything else. So this is something that we 100% have zero involvement with. Mike, what do you think? Do you think that Bill Belichick is uh, maybe lying there? Or do you think, like... Some people do that. Yeah, this is just a mistake that the Patriots made. They hired this crew for their documentary series called Let's Play the Game or whatever it's called. And they made a mistake because they didn't know the rule. What do you think? He's lying. (laughs) I agree. All of a sudden he becomes Gabby. Yes. The guy, can't even, the guy can't even finish a sentence usually. <laughs> he can't convey a thought usually as far as with the media. Yes. All of a sudden he's talking and you're telling him, who is this guy? He's got a big mouth. <laughs> he's a cheater. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh-huh. I love Bill Belichick. I love the Patriots. I love Tom Brady. But this craft production's garbage and where you have eight minutes of tape – Focusing on a guy giving signals and talk and and focusing on players talking right and, and running off who's running on, I mean, give me a break. What is this, especially at a vulnerable time for them? And and let me just say this to everybody: I never believed the cheating stuff before, until now. This is bad for them. It is. And you know why it's bad for them? Because I think they cheated. I had to be looking. I didn't think Pete Rose cheated. I have to be convinced. I got convinced. And now I've been convinced of New England. Yep. Because I'm telling you, why would you even need to cheat playing the Bengals? <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. You got eight minutes just looking at these signals. That's that's nothing but that's that's somebody spying. Right. Look, when I was a kid, me and my buddies snuck into Wrigley Field when the Bears practiced there. Mm-hmm. We got chased by four burned security guards mm-hmm. because Hallis was paranoid. And Hallis also thought that Lombardi had Green Bay scouts in one of the apartment buildings. Yep. Okay? Yep, so I that. this is nothing new. Right. That's right. It's been going on. But, man, that these guys, if you would have told me, you think after Spygate that – this will ever happen again i'd say no they'd be idiots right exactly right exactly well and and one of the reasons people are speculating that they did this is because they're facing a rookie coach within who who also has a new defensive coordinator for the Bengals. so perhaps they videotaped every other coach in the nfl or teams right. that they're going to play and so they wanted to collect this data on the signals of this new nfl coach Perhaps that's why. And here's another thing. Is it data or is it data or is it both? I, yeah, I think it's either way. I, uh, I think it's like paper route or paper route. Yeah, exactly. And I go route data. Route 66 or route 66. Uh, I, I'll take either way. I'll, I'll get there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to tell you is I think he cheated. Yeah. I, I, think this is, I think this is them trying to get signals from what you said, a new regime, blue, blue, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's hard for me to, and then he's talking like he's a 
like he's a communications major all of a sudden. <laughs> I know, that was hilarious. That was... How, why are you commenting? You know nothing. You say you know nothing about it because you're saying you didn't look at it? Exactly. exactly. Give me a break. You don't watch the TV show. You know what? You don't edit. You don't look at it. I, you know what? He can't be believed anymore. <laughs> But they're not going to have their rings taken from them. That is for sure. Now, the word no, what is... what they'll have is draft picks, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, but this is blatant here, man. Right. The word is is that the NFL seems to be siding with the Patriots, but that they're still going to face some kind of disciplinary fine. Why would they if they're siding with them? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I don't I don't understand. I mean, this is according to Ian Rappaport, that they're probably going to get a, a slap on the wrist with a fine and, and kind of hopefully... Forget about everything. One other point regarding this. One of the things I've learned about the Patriots since the Bill Belichick era is that every time they are accused of doing something wrong, they come back the next week or for the next several games and they play like they've got something to prove. They, they are giving the Bengals 10 points this Sunday. I think they're going to easily cover that, and they're going to crush the Cincinnati Bengals, win by 15, 20 points. What do you think? Well, they are going to do that because they got information on it. <laughs> you know what? Give me 16 checkers to your 12. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's amazing to me. I used to hear the people talk about steroids uh-huh. and how, you know what, oh, you know, he did it in home run. Jeff Bonds would hit 73. Sure, he would have. You know, give me a break. It's like saying, you know, we're going to have seven players and you and this team gets 11 players. But you go, wait a minute. What's that? Well, they're going to cheat. But when they win, you got to be impressed. Yes. Because, you know, I mean, you know, we, we, what are you talking about? Well, see, that's what I'm talking about here. You know, cheating is the worst thing to me as far as when you're talking about playing a game of competition. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand. But now, I'm very, and this brings me back to now Spygate. Did I misjudge them? Did I, did I just say they would never do that right. out of just pure stupidity or ignorance? Or did I really believe it? Or did I think they would never do something like this? Because all those questions now can resurface. Exactly. It, 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 it just cast a suspicion over this dynasty, really. You can call it a dynasty because even though they don't, you win the Super Bowl every year in today's NFL with free agency and all that stuff, this really has been a dynasty that Bill Belichick has coached over. And so it, 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 it just draws a dark cloud over everything that they've Absolutely. accomplished. Absolutely. Yeah, it's sad. It really is. It is. It's too bad for, for them because this one is not good. Right. This this one was not good for them. The other ones, I said, you know what, give me a break. The deflated football thing I never bought. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's a big joke. My tires get deflated in this weather. I checked them out today. That said 36 <laughs> on the thing. Then I come back after driving for about down 47. It said 34. What the hell did I do? That's right. It's science, man. It's weather. What do you want me to do? Now, they were indoors. The guy went in. Did Belichick know about that now? I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal because even Aaron Rodgers – said I like overinflated football, so they do mess with the football. The only problem, though, Mike, is that the ball boy, he goes into the washroom for about 10 minutes with the balls. What the hell is he doing in the washroom with because all the footballs? Because if you have to take a dump, okay, <laughs> are you going to leave the balls out there to be stolen? I don't know. I don't know. You're going to bring them in where at least you can open up the door when you're taking – you know, you're, you're doing your duty to say if you hear somebody come in saying, don't touch these. Pit. But if you leave the football, if you leave the footballs outside, mm-hmm. see, that would have been my story. I had, take, you know, <laughs> I had to take the dump. I can't leave them out there. But I understand where people have questions now. This is what we're talking about. I didn't care before. But now they're. They're filming the Bengals? I know. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I got to let people know that they should go to VegasScoresAndOdds.com if they want Mike's advice on that Patriots-Bengals game and on any other NFL advice. Mike, let's close the show. Tell people where they should go. Let's give our great salute to our friends over at Vegas Scores and Odds. And then you and I got to get to work. We got some commercials to cut. Yeah, we do. We got some commercials to cut. My brother was in California about two weeks ago. He told me at uh, my mom's 90th birthday reu- uh, birthday party that uh, he was in California. He heard our commercial. 
He goes, awesome. I can't believe it. I can't get away from this guy. He was, he was, he was in like Santa Maria, California. <laughs> going, where the hell is he at? He thought he was in the, I was in the back seat, you know? So uh, I, I loved hearing that story. So, yeah, you can go to VegasScoresAndOdds.com. Go to VSAO Sports. Follow them there, ladies and gentlemen. You pick up some free picks. I had the Rams a couple weeks ago. I'm going to probably put up a free pick this week, too. We got our Bear Bar Room stuff uh, going on and stuff like that. So uh, check it out, Bears Bar Room. Check out the packages. Check out Vegas Scores and Odds. Check out the packages. Excuse me. Bears Bar Room. Check out Twitter. That's what I meant to say. At Bears, uh, at Bears Bar Room. And check at VSAL Sports. Eldo Becky. All right, everybody. Remember, uh, if you want some more football talk, we're going to be here live at 8 p.m. Bears 100 Proof with Draft Dr. Phil Woo! and Shane Marsall. And this show, like all of our Vegas scores and odds advantage, can be found on the Bears Barroom Radio Network. You should go to wherever you get podcasts and just search Bears Barroom Radio Network, download it, and you'll get all the episodes on your phone. Or if you're a YouTube watcher, just go to the Bears Bar room youtube channel and you will have access to the show there as well mike north i love you i'll talk to you in about uh, two minutes here we'll do, i'll talk to you in about a minute and a half my friend. <laughs> there you go. Walk, everybody <laughs>